Hello, hello, hello everyone. How are you? It is B. We are going to do a planetary prep video for all of you. Um, I am probably going to be moving planetary preps over to my uh, membership on my website, but I'm going to be doing these for you. They are basically what they are is they're just basically prepping you for some of the changes that these planets go through, especially when we have retrogrades, when they ingress into another sign, those types of things. So they're not, um, they don't happen every day. Uh, they happen usually, you know, sometimes they'll happen twice in one week and sometimes they'll happen once every couple months. It just depends. But um, I just want to let you guys know that we're going to do a planetary prep. I used to do these pretty frequently and I stopped doing them. And now I realize that they're very helpful actually so the planetary prep is uh, for Pluto and for Mercury. Um, now, these are focus points for this week, and I'll, I'll tell you why that is. Um, I want to basically explain to everyone kind of how everything works. Um, this is going to be actually some things I go through regarding my classes, so on and so forth. I will be uh, basically teaching people how to prep for planetary movements and how to be able to activate their own psychic abilities to kind of see what's going to need to be prepared for the future or what opportunities lie in the future for them as well. Um, my classes probably will be coming up here, I would say, within the next month or so. The first class will be out, and that's on houses. So uh, that's something I want to get done. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's get started here. Now, I will be doing... Uh, planetary aspect video, which is my psychic uh, astro. I will be doing that along with this. And after I do these planetary prep videos for maybe two or three months, I'll move them over to my website for my members. All right, we're going to get right into it. This is for the week commencing on May 10th of 2021 through May 16th of 2021. Now, the first thing I'm going to say here is I want to give you an example of some interesting things that are about to happen, okay? And I want to give you an example as it relates to my very own chart, okay? I have my Mars, my natal Mars is at 21 degrees of Taurus. Now the sun in Taurus is moving from 20 degrees to 25 degrees, give or take a degree, over this next week that we're talking about. So as it relates to me, I want to give you some examples in how to put these things together, okay? And um, it's, it's pretty interesting because having a science background, um, I have um, ways to be able to see homozygosity and heterozygosity, and I'll explain that in my classes, okay? So here we go, and this is kind of how I do this because really astrology is science. It is... Um, degrees, math, um, but I also add my own psychic abilities into it, and I'll teach everybody how to do that, but let's get started. So the sun in Taurus at 20 to 25 degrees, give or take a degree. So basically what's happening here, Mars is at 21 degrees of Taurus in my natal chart. This 21 degrees of Taurus in my natal chart resides in my 12th house. So who rules the 12th house? Well, Pisces rules the 12th house. So it is likely that, um, you know, and I've said it before, when you've got Mars in the 12th or the sun in the 12th, it is, you're usually a night owl, okay? You usually like to stay up much later and you're not really a morning person. Now that may not be for everybody, but that's what I've noticed. So I have to deal with the fact that my Mars is in my 12th house and it's the house that I rule as a Pisces. So what's happening here is the sun is transiting over my Mars. And I'm just giving you this example on my natal chart so you can start figuring out your own chart. And if you're into the Vedic astrology or sidereal astrology or any of those, you go back, um, you go back about 24 degrees, 23 degrees, right in there. And that being the case, if I were to use Vedic astrology for myself, I wouldn't be a Gemini rising. I would be a Taurus rising. Okay. 
right at the edge and the cusp of the uh, second decan of Taurus, actually. But the sun this week is going to transit over my Mars. So that basically means that the sun is going to conjunct my natal Mars at 21 degrees. Well, what's so fascinating about this with me, it's almost like I've got my, my energetic fingers in all of these pies, right? Because it's 21 degrees, and when you break, up, break down 21, you get a 3, which is the house of Gemini. So I've got Gemini, Pisces, and Taurus really heavy in my chart. Just because of the degrees, because of, you know, um, the positions and where they're at, in what sign, in what house. So this is all about contracts, agreements, negotiations, siblings, short distance travel, the neighborhood and the society one is involved with. So how am I going to figure out, since I have a 12th house activation, that my sun sign rules in my actual Gemini house, that I rule as a rising and it's in Mars. It's my Mars conjunction. And it's within orb all week. That's a lot of things to put together. That's a lot of algorithms to have to figure out. A lot of detail. But I'm going to tell you what I should be expecting this upcoming week, May 10th through May 16th. So I am going to have a combination of things happen, of any one of these things happening. A combination of the past coming back, it already happened today. I had somebody from my past reach out to me already. You see how this works? Mars is the getter done planet. So there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of getting her done. Okay. There's a lot of pushing forward. Activity, action is here. So I have a combination of energy with my past, with anything that has been hidden, my psychic abilities, my unconscious, subconscious, the research that I do, uh, the hospital that I work for, addictions, dealing with addictive people, uh, dealing with Pisces people, dealing with people with psychosis, people that are not all, all that stable, dealing with unconditional love. That's all of the 12th house activations. But my 12th house is in Taurus, so how is this going to affect me? It's going to affect me through my self-value, the money I make from the company I work for or own, the body politic, possessions, real estate, stubbornness, So, for example, did this person from my past who reached out to me, did, does it or did it affect my self-value in some way, shape, or form? I'm going to have to say yes. I will. Um, it's also an unconscious or subconscious energy as well. Because we tend to be a little bit different on the political spectrum, but we respect one another. We handle our affairs differently. Real estate was talked about as well. So you can kind of see how this all kind of comes up. But the other thing here, it's the sun. Don't forget. It's the sun that's triggering the Mars. And the sun is life force energy. So it is a life force trigger or a focus on my passions, my strengths, my warlike spirit, my get her done energy, my aggression or fire energy is being activated. This whole week. So 
what I have to do is I've got to make sure that I am minding my energy because fire, it, it can make a lot of steam with a water sign, but it can get out of control with my rising air sign, Gemini. So I've got to be careful to stay on the positive side and make sure I moderate my responses and my activities. Okay. So what I would suggest for all of you out there, find out where 20 to 25 degrees of Taurus is in your natal chart. Do you have any planets there? Do you have any calculations there? Okay, like the, the rising sign, that's just a calculation. The north node is a calculation. So, so um, do you have anything in that 20 to 25 degrees of Taurus? And if so, that planetary energy is going to get activated. So find out what type of planetary energy is there. What type of planet's there. What, what type of characteristics that planet has. It's going to get activated with life force energy. Strength. If you don't have a planet there, very quickly, that house is going to have something illuminated about it. Is it your first house? Okay, is it a first house in Taurus between 20 and 25 degrees? If your first house is being activated, something about your identity is going to be illuminated. It may cause you to get stubborn. It may cause you to want to bring more money into your life. It may cause you to fight for your own self-value. See how that works? So that's just an example. But we're going to get into the two big planets that are important here. And I'll give you a little bit of an example with my very own chart. But it's not going to be near as long as this, the one that I did with the sun here. Okay, that was just giving you an idea of how this whole thing works. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get into Pluto. Now, Pluto is really important. Really important right now. Because there is a lot of things we need to talk about regarding the outer planets. The energies last much longer. The degrees are more significant in the numerology itself. Okay. So where is Pluto right now? Pluto is in Capricorn. And Pluto went retrograde on April 28th in Capricorn. It retrogrades from its 26 degree marker back to its 24 degree marker. The first thing you ask yourself is, do I have any planets here or any calculations here, a rising, a north node? Is it within orb of three to five degrees of these degrees? So basically 23 degrees to about 21 degrees, you're gonna get some, some energetic triggers from this planet, okay, and Pluto. So Pluto could be transiting over one of your planets or one of your calculations. And this is significant. This means there is going to be transformation whether you like it or not. Okay, all that stability, that foundation is going to be, is going to be shaken to its core or transformed. A lot of times when Pluto is approaching a planet, what you want to do is you want to get ahead of it because the change is a coming. All right? So if you get ahead of it and you, you get the change energy integrated in a manner that works for you instead of against you, it could serve you quite well. If you do not have a planet or a calculation here, then what you need to look at is your house position. What house contains 24 to 26 degrees of Capricorn? Or I should say, um, let's see here, three degrees, plus or minus three degrees. That's usually where it's at. The most, the most potent is going to be three degrees. So let's redo this. So let's do um, 21 degrees of Capricorn to about 29 degrees of Capricorn. That's where it's, it's most potent. Find out what house contains those degrees. 
That's the house Pluto is needing to revisit. So Pluto went through and really just knocked everything for six. Transformed it, changed it, destroyed it even. And now Pluto has to go back over it again. So Pluto is reassessing what was destroyed or what was transformed. Okay, but let's get into the detail. So this is the revisit of the change, the conflict, the destruction, or the transformation. This is lasting from April 28th when it went retrograde, maybe even a little bit before that. I'd say probably the beginning of April. You kind of felt the, the energy kind of changing a little bit. And then it really hit on April 28th. This goes all the way to October 7th of 2021. This is a very long revisit. Okay. Very long revisit. And this is revisiting energies from about six to seven months before April 28th. Okay. So look at things that are going to need to be reviewed from the last six to seven months. Did something start, then stop? Did something fizzle out? Was something destroyed? Was something transformed? It's being revisited now. And so this will cover the numeric energies of these degrees of 26, 25, and 24. So what type of energies can we expect all the way up to October 7th in a revisit? Well, it's the eight energy. This is where the revisit starts is at the eight energy, which is strength and power, power plays and ambition, a revisit to some sort of ambition that you had or someone that had some sort of power play with you or someone that was trying to lord their strength or their power over you or you them. And this has everything to do with partnerships, one-on-one -on -one dialogue, compromises, cooperation, and collaboration. And this particular one-on-one -on -one dialogue, this discussion, was all about being responsible, going through some tough lessons, even creatrix energy, where you are the creator, a, like a mother, a motherhood energy, a matriarch energy, and family relationships. So while it's at 26 degrees, this is what's going to be revisited. Then when it gets to 25 degrees, it's the seven energy. The seven energy is going to be reverberating. And this is all about equality and fairness or justice. It is to seek. It is to search for the truth. It is um, basically, it rules the intellectual people, the intellectuals. It is the difference between knowing and understanding. Now, the thing is, being an intellectual doesn't mean you're smart. I hope everybody can pick up what I'm laying down. But this equality and this fairness or this justice to seek and to learn the truth is all about, again, more partnership energy, the one-on-one -on -one dialogue energy, the compromises, the cooperation, the collaboration. And this revisit, once you get to the 25th degree, is going to bring up some energy regarding that great change. This is truly when Pluto is in its most potent state is, is when it's at this 25 degree numeric. Because it's about great change, conflict, challenges, competition, kinetic energy, being highly independent in the mind and the soul. This energy simply does not tolerate being told what to do. Okay? It is adaptable 
but it's adaptable to its own needs. It's a smart energy. It's a progressive energy. It's opinionated. It's a little bit of a rebellious energy. It's, ideo it's ideologues. People that can quickly make sense out of chaos. This may be a revisit to someone in your life or you yourself as it relates to a lack of discipline or maybe stretching others to their limits. Experiments. I'll say that again, experiments. When Pluto hits the revisit to the 25 degree energy, this is going to be significant. Okay? Regarding the big experiment. And you'll know what that means. And then it moves back to its 24 degrees. Okay? And so when it moves back to its 24 degrees, it's the six energy. It's bringing in the energy of being responsible, the tough lessons, the creatrix energy, and family relationships. And this energy contains, again, that partnership energy, that one-on-one -on -one dialogue. Really, when it all boils down to it, you have a one or a two energy, if you think about it. It is self and it is others. Partnerships. So we have that me or self energy versus you or the other energy. And this revisit is going to be all about the compromises, the cooperations, and the collaborations of those one-on-one -on -one partnerships. Those are going to be revisited. And this particular 24 degree energy is going to be a revisit that is going to be needed to establish stability, structure, order, um, patience, kind of a, a traditional type energy, being resilient and persistent, results oriented energy as well, very important. And it's a really simple and practical energy, but it can be um, a very stubborn energy as well. Bullheaded. Okay. So you've got this, this Pluto going over possibly a, a, a planet between 21 and 29 degrees of Capricorn or within orb, and that energy is reactivating these dialogues that need to be revisited. Now, if you've got Mars in this area, Pluto visiting Mars, that is, that is a very passionate transformation. If you've got a rising, this is your identity, everything about your identity. You're dialoguing with yourself. Do Am I the person I want to be? Am I showing myself the way I want others to see me? Okay? So that's the transformation of self, of the identity, of how others see you. But if it's a Mars, then it's going to be a very volatile energy, almost a destructive energy. Say that you've got this energy in your fourth house. Well, what, what, would you, what should you do with this energy? Well, I think what I would do with this energy is I would transform, I would, I would put it like a, like a home gym in my house. If you can, if you have the means to do that. And rev up your metabolism, transform your body, through putting that Mars energy in the home, the passion, the fire. And then the Pluto energy transforms the body. So you get in control of it first. Don't let it come up to you and say, well, since you're not doing anything, I've got to make a change here 
in your fourth house, I am Pluto. I'm, I'm literally coming over Mars in your fourth house in Capricorn. Capricorn's all about stability and structure. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't know, send a lightning strike to your house. Or cause something to be demolished in the home. Or a destruction of some sort. Even horrible arguments with the family. So try and get in front of it. That's what you want to do. And I just, I'm just giving you some examples. This is energy that's going to last all the way to October 7th. So be prepared for this. Get in front of Pluto always. Because the, the change is coming. And it's going to transform you. And help you with that transformation if you get in front of it. Or if you don't, it's going to create a transformation or a destruction in your life that you weren't expecting in that house. Okay? Hope this is making sense for people. Now, last but not least, we are getting into uh, Mercury. And, and just to kind of give you guys an example, for me, I don't particularly have any planets at these degrees, nor do I have any calculations at these degrees, but it is visiting my ninth house, and it's cusping my eighth. So my transformation needs to happen with travel, foreign people, foreign lands, people, politics, legal law, the occult, higher education, as well as joint finances, intimacy, the underworld, deep-seated issues, sex, death, rebirth, possession, or I'm sorry, ob obsession, jealousy or revenge. I mean, Pluto is literally reversing back over the very, my house, my eighth house, and Pluto rules the eighth house, rules Scorpio. So I've got an energetic match. So, so that eighth house trigger is going to be significant for me. So I've got to get in front of it so that it doesn't sneak up on me. Okay. Now, let's get into Mercury. So Mercury will retrograde between May 30th until June 22nd. And there is a strong shadow period of about one and a half weeks before and after this time. Now, why am I saying one and a half weeks? So some people will argue with me it's much longer than that. And that's fine. You can certainly do that. But it will be very intense for about one and a half weeks. And why is this? Because Mercury is retrograding in its own sign that it rules. So expect it to be very, very intense about one and a half weeks before and after. So expect a lot of re-energy starting at the end of May and all of June. All of June. It is retrograding over the degrees of 24 degrees is where it starts, and it goes all the way back to 16 degrees. So pay attention to the energy that happens between May 15th through May 30th. This energy will be revisited, give or take five, seven days. I think starting on the 15th, if you have some significant events that are a redo or a, a reassess, just leave a note in your phone and just, just go through those. Like everything that you're doing that have like causality associated with it, okay, like say that you're making a big move, you're signing on the dotted line, whatever it is that you're doing between May 15th and May 30th, write it down because you will be revisiting it again between May 30th and June 22nd. So if you have any planets or a significant degree marker in your natal chart, the retro Mercury will bring up something from your past again for you to handle the right way this time, or the correct way this time. This will be associated with whatever planet or significant degree is activated. So what is the example for me? For me, this is going right over my ascendant. 
and it's activating my 12th house and my first house. Remember, because your first house starts at your ascendant. So it's going over and back over my ascendant and back even further into my going back and visiting my 12th house. So this is going to get interesting for me. I, I'm, I'm definitely going to be tracking these developments because this is my identity. So what the heck? I'd be real curious. So the end of May is going to be frenetic. Why is that? Because Geminis are frenetic. Geminis, it's hard for Geminis to sit still. They constantly have to be jumping on things. They've got to be constantly doing things. They've got to constantly have their mind going. They're constantly thinking. They're overthinkers, very much so. They're analytical. Thank goodness for my moon and my sun in Pisces slow me down and get me to relax a little bit. But I'm still very frenetic. I feel like I have to constantly accomplish, 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 accomplish. So this is going to get really interesting for, for, for me. I'm really curious. So if you can take some time, take some time off to relax and enjoy peace at the end of May, it's because it's frenetic, not just for me, but for everybody at the end of May, because you're going to have Mercury going direct, then retro, then direct, and it's just going to be a lot to handle in the sign of Gemini because Mercury is going to affect all things Gemini in the house of Gemini. A revisit to frenetic energy about contracts, agreements, negotiations, communications, short distance travel, siblings, the neighborhood, the lie versus the gossip or the lie versus the truth. Okay. So get your rest because once Mercury starts going direct again, it is going to be kind of a new chapter or a, a turning of the page. Let's put it that way. Because there are different energies that are about to introduce themselves into your life, especially the Geminis. Especially the Geminis. Even the Virgos, because uh, Virgos are also ruled by Mercury. So Virgos and Geminis, I would say you have definitely got some sort of new chapter or turning the page in your life coming up here regarding a revisit to something or regarding um, a need to pay attention to something here with those Gemini characteristics. So get organized now and make sure that you're diligent. So find out where 16 to 24 degrees of Gemini is in your natal chart. That house is going to be revisited. Mercury may be going over a planet that's there or a calculation that is there. Whatever house this is and whatever planet may possibly be there, whatever calculation may be there, okay, you need to get organized about that house or about that planet. Really organized because it's going to be frenetic. It's going to be a lot of things happening at once that you've got to prepare for ahead of time. And you've got to be very diligent. So as an example, let's say that you have um, Venus in Gemini between 16 and 24 degrees. This is a communication about love. Massive communication about love, revisiting something regarding a love relationship. Or how you find comfort and how you receive love and give love in a situation. How you communicate that with your family, especially your siblings. 
the labor of love is going to be revisited for some of you. So get organized regarding this. Put your words down on paper before you, you express yourself to other people. Get clear on your communication. Concise on your communication. Think about what it is you want to reveal versus what you probably should not reveal. In this revisit, if you've got a Venus in Gemini between 16 and 24 degrees. Okay? So it's, it's going to get, like I said, it's going to get a little bit frenetic. And you definitely don't want to get behind the eight ball on this one. All right? So there's your planetary prep for what's coming through here. All these active energies that are going to be happening this week that you should start feeling pretty intensely now. Hope that preps you. Um, right now, since Pluto has been moving retrograde since April 28th, I think we're in the clear. I think it's it's out of its, um, its cusp orb. So um, I think that we're, we're good. Okay. Not cusp orb. I'm sorry. It's, it's starting to pick up its pace going retrograde. So you should start feeling that Pluto retrograde in Capricorn right about now. Okay. So I'm going to end that there. I hope all of you like the planetary prep. Um, I will be posting the uh, Psychic Astro next. I wish all of you the best. Much light, much love, and many blessings. And please remember to, um, you know, be clear in your communications. And there's going to be a lot of revisits to partnerships to the need for cooperation and collaboration. There's going to be things coming up here. And don't be surprised if people may throw you a little bit off guard or people know more than, um, than you thought they knew or you know more than they thought you knew. All right? It's going to be interesting. Take care, everyone. Talk to you later. Be out.